This is Reading School, a place I've spent the last seven years of my life. And I'm just about to finish my final term. Look, I get it. School sucks. It's rubbish. I can understand every reason you'd believe that. Just run with me for a bit. I'll try my best to change your mind. I was born in 2005, which means that this year I'll be turning 18 years old and leaving secondary school. But before I go, I'd like to talk about the experience of attending an all-boys British grammar school. <laughs> What's so interesting about that? And what's the grammar school? Across the UK, there exist a number of schools where students are selected based on academic attainment. These schools are known as grammar schools and account for 5% of English public schools. But if you want in, you're gonna have to pass the test. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's another bright and busy day here at Reading School. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and the students are hard at work. However, it's no ordinary day at the school today. Little 10-year-old Hayden Young is stepping onto the grounds for the first time, just in time for his 11-plus entrance examination. Tiny little bugger, isn't he? Today, he will attempt the improbable, as he sits the multiple-choice examination on maths, English, and various other mental challenges in order to get into the school. Only the academic elite are permitted entry. But little Hayden ought not to worry, as he looks every bit the part of an intellectual gladiator, brandishing his short sword as he slices down the problems with ease. Look at him working away in the typical dogged fashion of his sort. Oh, and would you look at that, the boy's done it. How exciting. Look at him, all smiles and laughs. I don't remember this at all. Anyway. So, once you've made it into the school, what now? What's life like for a Reading School student? What's the best part about the school? As a group, we all push each other to do better. What is the best part about writing school? Leaving. The fact that you're surrounded by smart people. You're surrounded by so many smart people. I think most people come into this school, they spend most of like their primary school years being the really smart one. And then you're just kind of average or below average here. You're kind of average or maybe even below average, so they force you to keep pushing. Also, just having a bunch of smart people around you makes you think better. If you're surrounded by people who are below you, it doesn't help you grow. What about the worst? The worst part of our Reading School? Oof. The worst part of the school? Yeah. Grab and go prices. Outrageous. I feel really bad if I said it was the food. I think that's probably like its weakest point, but I really like the catering stuff. I think the fact that there are no girls here means that we don't get any perspective from that side of humanity. That's like 50% of the population. I think most people in this school have basically no idea what's going on there. What was your favourite year being here and why? My favourite year has probably been year 10. There was just a sense that we'd matured together and grown up. Life was good. Oh, favourite year. That's a good question. Maybe for all the wrong reasons, but I think year 11 was such a calm year. we just come out of like COVID, exams were cancelled, so I didn't really have to take my GCSE seriously. So yeah, year 11 was a very nice year. Year 12 probably. That's when the friend group like definitively formed, so I felt most part of a community in year 12. School community. No. What was it like finding out you passed the 11 plus? I remember my mum got the letter first while I was at school. She wouldn't tell me on the car ride home. She was kind of like, oh, well, you'll find out. So I knew I did well. And then when I got it, I was like, yeah, nice. I didn't care that much though. Okay. Osama, what do you get up to around here? Um, I'm a pretty academic guy. Sometimes when I'm feeling studious, I might go to the LRC, learn out a few books, that sort of thing. Also, um, I like picking up litter. It helps keep the place clean and tidy. Amazing. My last thing, uh, I like helping out year sevens. Uh, it makes me feel good inside and I like showing people around the place. Before we go any further, it's time I address something you've probably noticed at this point in the video. Can you guess what it is? Experience of attending an all boys. The, the, the fact that there are no girls here. I kind of wish I had better ability to talk to women. That's right. Reading School is entirely male. something we ourselves tend to forget, and yet it's so foreign to outsiders. What's the point of this segregation? Some claim it helps to focus learning and builds uniquely strong communities, but critics believe the system is outdated and arbitrary. Here to discuss the matter, I've brought my good friend Jack Jordan. Uh, hello, my name is 
Jack Jordan. I suppose the best way to sum up who I am and what I do is God's gift to women. I've been described as a modern day Genghis Khan. Jack has been the worst part of my entire sixth form experience. How do you think the absence of the opposite gender has affected your experience? When I went to a joint sex school, girls would just throw themselves at me constantly. It was really draining. But you can't really blame them. I'm just gonna say off the bat, I have like zero game. Like I can talk to a girl like normal, like I would talk to Hayden. My Riz, it needs work. However, right, the biggest disadvantage was when I developed a very serious illness. Female withdrawal syndrome. Sometimes he'll just announce he's going feral mode and then start pulsing around the room on all fours. That has some pretty severe symptoms, um, including coughing, sneezing, headaches, joint pain, testicular torsion, insanity, dementia, early onset dementia. Dementia, yeah. You know, I once heard he left a fish on a girl's doorstep and claimed it was an act of remorse. I think I knew I was special. Almost immediately after I was born, I left the hospital with the nurse's phone number. She couldn't get brands off me. Just see what happens if you ask him if he's got a girlfriend. My value isn't quantified by my ability to get girls. The more important thing is the value of my character. But why do all this? Not just banning women from the school, but also calling this a refectory instead of a cafeteria calling tests, collections and interims, wearing strict uniform even in the sixth form, and singing hymns in a compulsory chapel service every week. It's all down to an idea vital to the identity of the school. Tradition. These conventions can seem annoying and irrelevant, but oftentimes they can be what brings the school together. Last year, such a great effort was made in support of the Ukraine crisis. I was commissioned to produce a video covering the efforts, but Unfortunately, it was decided that it couldn't be used. Lately, the ballers have been walking, running and just generally exercising the amount of distance from this school to Lviv, which is in Ukraine. All of these students and all of the staff at Reading School have banded together and helped donate food and supplies to Ukraine. Our boarding house have been doing help to raise funds to help the refugees. I think it's really inspiring the way we've come together as a school and it really shows our strength as a community. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. I will really hope they won't give up their hope. That is yeah. beautiful. Very, very Thank good, you. sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One thing that video did teach me was that the school functions with a reliance on its prefects. And boy, does it have a lot of prefects. Some contribute a lot to the school. Let's go find out what the other ones are doing. All right, let's go, let's go. It's, it's pretty dark in here, but I think it should be okay. Like, it's, it's uh, excuse me. I can see you recording. That's just not acceptable. No, it's all right, man. Uh, got... but, but, but. No. L listen. No, I'm... no, 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 no. You listen to me, okay? I'm a prefect. I know the rules of this school site. That is a direct violation of my privacy. It's a direct violation of all the students' privacy. And besides, who gave you the permission to record me? Bro, I need toilet upkeep prefect. <laughs> Wait, really? No, 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 that is not the point. This is a direct violation. It becomes all guidelines. It's just not fair. <laughs> What's your prefect role? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a quality prefect. Future stories prefect. Uh, school events. Uh, student voice. Daniel, what's your prefect role? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a common room prefect. Uh, future stories. What's your prefect role? This humble boat. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done in the past two years for your prefect role? Uh, good question. Um, um, uh, I've run the student council and we've uh, changed the uh, LRC food uh, sugar. Uh, just talk to parents about future stories and that happened for like one week. Yeah, besides that, I didn't do much for you. I've uh, helped grow the Future Stories program, helped the mentoring of uh, young students, and uh, we made the program very good. We secured a little foosball table. Ooh, how did you do that? We bought that table, football table. You stole you that. Um, we stole, stole that. that. Yeah, yeah, we paid for that. And some nice fragrance. It smells nice. Thank you. Make this place not stink like your, <laughs> you. I've organized the entrance exam. I did some work on the uh, tours for the school as well. What have you done in the past two years for your prefect role? 
I've, I've done nothing. Daniel, Daniel, yo, Daniel, yo, yo. So people are like asking me about what the. All right, let's make this quick. I've got a meeting at five. Don't worry, don't worry. So the first question I wanted to ask you was, um, as, so um, what do you think about the current state of affairs? As I sat there, watching head boys stride away from me, I was suddenly filled with such pride for this school community, and I began to reflect on the time I've spent here. Look, I get it. It's a school, a place you're forced to be, where you sit there in double English, wanting to end it all, where you're subjected to nonsensical rules set by out-of-touch adults, where you get made fun of by your peers for wearing your new light-up sketches even though they're literally f***ing awesome. The point is, there's plenty of reasons why I'm glad to leave school behind, as I'm sure a lot of you are as well. But in that hurry to move on to a new part of our lives, I think it's easy to forget to appreciate the unique aspects of this one. The awkwardness, the growth, the naivety, the friendships. School, as much as we might have grown to resent it, is a common experience that's unique in our lives for one big reason. Community. You're thrust into this environment where you're forced to be around a bunch of young people who are all in the same boat as you. And the connections that form from this environment are likely unlike any you'll make as an adult. Even though I wasn't close with everyone in my year, they formed a community that felt special to me. We've all spent seven years together in one of the strangest and most change-filled areas in our lives. These times, as much as we've been waiting to leave them, I think will have their own unique place in our memories. I think we'll remember them nostalgically as simpler times, times that we should have appreciated more as we live through them. So while it's really exciting to be entering university, or doing whatever else you might want to do, I guess what I really want to say is that we should appreciate the times we've had. Seven years after stepping foot on Reading School grounds, my year group are now alumni. Appreciate the small things. The laughs you have with your mates, talking in class when you're not meant to be, making fun of each other, even just walking around your hometown aimlessly on a random Saturday. Before we hastily push on into the future, into the unknown, just stop to remember how things were when we were teenage boys together in a grammar school, or any other place you might happen to be in. Because this video wasn't really just about Reading School. It's about being young, the growing pains, the trials and tribulations of school in general. And I hope even if you have nothing in common with me, if you go to school in Africa or Scandinavia or something, you could maybe still relate to some of the things I've said and take something away from this. Thanks for watching. Uh, excuse me. You're not allowed to record on a school site. That's unacceptable. <laughs> the issue for me is not getting a girlfriend. It's sticking to one woman. I mean, I've got so many girls on my payroll now. It's just, you know, it's not even funny. No, payroll. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel. You know how I Daniel. Yeah. No. no. Okay, 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 okay. Testicular torture. Let me actually. No, no, let, me, no. let me have. Testicular torture is not a thing. Testicular torture. Torsion. 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 <laughs> Testicular torture. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst part about the school? <laughs> As I sat there watching head boys stride away from me. What the fuck? When did you realize you were so good with women? <laughs> <laughs>